It's a special edition of the Starbase Summary here, October 5th through the 7th, because we may be days away from Flight 5. Everything seems to be coming together, including the hot staging ring going back up on the top of B-12. I actually got off a plane late last night here in Starbase. I'm actually recording it from uh, here in Brownsville, and we'll be heading out to work, driving past Massey's as soon as I'm done with the video here. But that is the plan. Everything seems to be coming together. We're going to start it out over this way. There's that air quotes around test tank 16. They're actual real quotes because they're on the screen. But I do make the motion with my hand, <laughs> hands when I see it. <laughs> There's booster 14 also over at Massey's. Bit of a gray day out there. But that cell phone tower in the foreground is a little tough, too. If we got booster 14 out there, we saw some cryo testing happen. You can tell because of the way that it is. You see the cryo on the outside of the booster as the atmosphere freezes to the outside of that tank. That's how humid it is down here in South Texas. The cold cryogenic liquids inside the stainless steel. There's no uh, insulation. You know, the shuttle tanks, SLS, have the SOFI, the spray on foam insulation. There's no insulation on Starship. So it is uh, really prone to forming ice like that. But taking it over to the reflecting pool area, conveniently away from the no parking sign there. Moving up the road just a little bit, looking in the gate. I guess this would be the second gate now. Still unstacked at this point in the video. The ship and the booster there as the clouds Royal in the background. Moving back up to the production site, there's ship 31 peeking out of the high bay. We've been seeing the tile work on that for quite some time. And the scaffolding going up the side. Look at this. It's like an angry gulf. The beach conditions out here are tough right now. Massive amounts of erosion. Is that, wait, is that a sea turtle? It is. It's labeled sea turtle. Look at that. It's going to be over uh, near the jetties, I guess. No kidding. I'm going to reach out to Sea Turtle Inc. It's every time I see Sea Turtle, I'm like, oh, is that a really Sea Turtle? But that's like the only named type of Sea Turtle that I know, so I don't just want to apply that to all Sea Turtles. I'm going to guess that uh, Jack was out there at the jetties to catch Hoss Ridgewind. Heading back out again. Jack just yelled, yep, <laughs> from the other side of the bunkhouse here. Jack was like, yep. <laughs> but sailing out after more recovery efforts. Watch for a dolphin. There's always dolphins. I see a fin. Yeah, there's a dolphin. It's like you see the zoomed in shot of the bow of the ship and you're like, oh, dolphin time. There you go, buddy. Look at you. Very cool. I, I remember that when I was a kid. We'd go... Uh, at a Port Aransas, there's a big ship channel and ferry up near Corpus Christi, Port Aransas. And it was always a treat. Apparently, we got lots of dolphin footage here, like half the video. It's not Starbase Summary anymore. It is now dolphin watching. We should get on that boat right there and <laughs> ride around and do video. Anyways, Haas head on out. think that the recovery operations may be complete. I don't know if that's for now at least, but... Anyways, hopping back over to Starbase again. That's the Pez dispenser. You see the box in the middle. It's a garage door that opens. What did that, that clip could have been longer. I'm going to slow that down and rewind a little bit. But uh, you see the hole for the Pez dispenser down at the bottom. And then over to a stand. And then another gratuitous time lapse of the clouds passing Starbase. And the different wind levels. You see? Do you see wind shear? Can't really see wind shear there. Ah, look at this. This is the Booster 11 Aft Dome. Of course, this is what Haas Ridgewind dropped at the Port of Brownsville. I guess carefully unloaded. But Jack lucked out. Look at that. Ah, oh, that looks like we recovered like an alien artifact or something. It looks like an upside-down UFO. This is, how, this is how conspiracy theories start. Oh, it wasn't the remains of Booster 11. It was actually an unidentified flying, well, floating object. I think it sank. Anyways. Anything can be a UFO if you're bad at identifying flying objects. That one's not, though. 
It's the aft part of booster that ended up out in the Gulf. Very cool to catch that. This is elevated. I think he got up on his car or something there at the end. <laughs> I got another yup from across the room. All right. Uh, Ship 30's press plate was removed. And there is the cutie arm retracting, getting out of the way. Usually an indication there will be operations happening like this. Ship 30 getting stacked up on booster 12. There go the chopsticks. Raising the ship. Love the spotlights. Crane's a little in the way, but I guess we'll allow it. It'll get out of the way for launch. The time lapse flashing is serious business. It's like, it's, 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 I don't actually, I, I assume, yeah, I guess the mic should record my poor attempt at drum and bass or whatever. <laughs> There's boots and cats involved, I think. Well, we're going to pivot over above the booster. The crate, you see the crane there in the foreground, but the crane's not doing anything. That was just for the hot stage ring. This is the chopsticks, of course. Really cool scene from Starbase Live here. You can you could watch this happening in real time if you head over to SBL. Links are all down below. There's the launch site wide again with the full stack. If we said ready to go before, I think we are uh, definitely more confident in using the term ready to go, or the phrase, I guess, ready to go. Little visit from the Boca Chica Air Force in the foreground there. And more OLM parts delivered. You can see some pivot points on there, potential pivot points. You see the big circles, right? Not the big cutouts, but the little circles. It's, it's possible that those are like mounting points for things that will pivot or move and sort of clamp or move out, I guess, to hold the booster up or something along those lines. A ton of uh, speculation in exactly how this thing is going to come together. Is it going to be a circle? Is it going to be a square? Is it going to be an oblate spheroid? It's not going to be that. I just That's just one of the terms that I know because the Earth is that, but whatever. Here's some OLM top, dip, top deck pancake parts. Let's see a bunch of those uh, holes in the middle, sort of reinforcements. It is very much a pancake, I guess. What is that big piece of beam? Weld shims root 516. I don't think that's a weld shim. It's not like saying that that is a weld shim. I think it's like instructions, like, hey, weld the shims. Wow, you parked this thing on the side of the road. And Mary is going to get over there and make sure we've got uh, up-close footage. This one's for all the 3D modelers out there who want to make sure that this stuff gets modeled appropriately. Look at this. <laughs> We're going to walk by it again. Seeing exactly how this stuff comes together. You get the scale as well because it's the, see the, the width of the truck versus the width of that part. And I guarantee you, some of those 3D models, it's like, oh, this is just on the inside. You're not going to see this part. I ah, just make it a flat plate or whatever. It's like, I guarantee you, some of the 3D modelers have this level of detail inside of the models they make. There's so many people that do such good work with that. Look at that big, oh. That's cool. I cannot wait till this all sorts sort of comes together. Got some numbers up there too. It's like they ground off the rust or patina and they wrote numbers on it. Hmm. A bunch of writing, somebody playing tic tac toe on this. <laughs> We've moved on from Dolphin Watch and now we're pancake plate. This is now a pancake pancake plate video. with all of the different markup on the pancake plates. 
Huh. You know, I see the uh, circular holes in there, right? And remember previously when we looked at the, the main parts of the deck in a previous video, and I was like, oh, those are rounded. They look like a ship. And a lot of you in the comments were, were pointing out, oh, those for stretch fracture prevention, right? So you put those corners in there, the rounded shapes instead of a square shape, so you don't have a place where the force sort of comes together. But here we've got the booster rolling back from Massey's, I believe. Yep, that's going towards the prod site. But anyways, I, I continue to read the comments. If y'all have things to say, even if it's like, I hate this guy talking. Hey, like, whatever. <laughs> it's fine. That's why you can click the gear and change the audio track if you'd like. We're still doing that with every one. It does take a little bit of time, though. Sometimes it takes YouTube you know, 15 20, 30 minutes to actually enable that other track. And we've tried all sorts of tricks, but it doesn't seem to, to make it happen any faster. But we are still doing that for those who celebrate ambient audio. There is another OLM part delivered. And here you can really see there's the holes that might be pivot points for pins or, let's say, hinges or something like that. And the big circular edges, no, uh, or the circular cutouts, no square angles or sharp angles where stress can accumulate and then cause cracking because I guarantee you this thing's going to experience a lot of stress. Another truck payload here with some tower module stands. It actually says module three on the outside. Was that going into Sanchez? I think that one was. There's the tower two chopsticks and carriage. We see these on occasion. A lot of speculation on whether or not they are waiting for the attempt of the catch in Flight 5, which SpaceX has confirmed that they're going to go for the catch, maybe, unless they abort, right? But are there going to be modifications to this system, assuming the tower, the ship does come back, booster, sorry, does come back and get caught? How does that go? Is this design going to work or not? Hey, one way to find out. Throw a steel, stainless steel skyscraper at it and see what happens. What we are potentially coming up for. Now I'm out here right now. I'm out here to help uh, set up some cameras. We've got some new goodies to install. Make sure it's all good to go, but I'm not going to be here. I have to leave before the launch attempt. I'm gonna go out there and check this out myself, the uh, parking garage, and see exactly what the heck is going on there. You know, I think there's a lot of non-apparent progress here. We see this on occasion, but it's almost like you need to photo hunt, A-B test them to see exactly what has changed. I'm almost positive those railings aren't plastic railings. Somebody in the comments was like, oh, it might be plastic railings. Like, just, I don't know if it's like a saran wrap or what's really the difference between glass or plexiglass or Lexan or whatever, besides a lot of it being brand names. Or some of it being brand names, but... Anyways, it's some sort of clear railing in between those railing posts. So moving right along to a tanking test. Got the full stack over there. You can see, you see the ice growing on the booster in the ship on the right-hand side. You can see where the tanks are, right? The, uh, the oxygen tank, the lox liquid oxygen tank on the bottom, the methane tanks. Here it's tough to see because the ship has the Heat tiles on this side, and you don't really get the ice forming on the outside of the heat tiles. As it turns out, they're insulators. But here from the side angle, right, this is from south, you can see the ice on the ship. It's actually melting away there. But up on the ship, you can see the right-hand side, no ice. Left-hand side, ice. But there you have it, folks. Thanks for all the folks who got out there and captured this. Jack and Mary and the SBL operators. I'm John Galloway. I'm out in Starbase because SpaceX seems to be going full steam ahead for a launch no earlier than the 13th. Thanks for watching, y'all, and we'll see you later.